Attention! The method that I'm about to show you is what some would consider an exploit. There's nothing wrong with this, you're playing your game. However, if this is not the way that you want to do it, I will show you another method in the pinned comment. This includes a character called Toasty and she can kill Red Death. However, that method requires a lot of skill and is for some casual players possibly not achievable. As a second warning, everything that you will see in this guide, unless stated otherwise, is more for direction and less of a definitive solution. Especially positions vary in results and a lot has to do with RNG. This is another reason why some people dislike this method, since you can literally copy what I am doing and you might fail. Expect this to take potentially multiple hours or even days. Save yourself a lot of wasted hours and pay close attention to the guide, especially what I'm doing. I've seen people watching my guide live and they skip through it, then they went for the wrong weapons or they ignored something else that was a minor detail to them and it caused them to fail multiple attempts in a row, each attempt taking more than 30 minutes. Step 1. These are the power ups that you want to use. Don't use Magnet, don't use Grove, don't use Curse. Magnet and Grove cause you to level up faster, which you need to avoid, and Curse makes it harder overall and also scales up Red Death in health. Step 2. You have to play with Clergy. She gains a bonus of 400% area when she's level 1. On every following level up, she will lose 100% area. This is why you can't afford to further level up after you get level 2. If you reach level 3, it will be impossible for you to stay alive. Further, the Reaper has 655,000 health per level that you have. So even if you manage to stay alive, it would take 50% more damage to kill him. Step 3. Play on the inlaid library Play on hyper mode, but don't play on hurry mode. It is technically possible to finish it on hurry mode, but even I fail with this most of the time. Mind you, I have killed the reaper more than 60 times by now, and yet I wouldn't do this. If you choose to not play on hyper mode, expect that you will not level up everything, which would be fine since chests can give the rest of the levels, but you give up a free 15% bonus projectile speed. There is nothing that really speaks for not using hyper mode. Step 4. The first arcana that you will choose is Awake. The next two will be Slash and an entirely useless one. Do not pick projectile speed and do not pick duration. Duration will mess with the clock lancet and projectile speed will mess with rune tracer. At first it might sound like a good idea since it overall buffs the rune tracer, but it will just lead to the rune tracer leaving the area where you want it to be in. So as your two other choices, either pick the one with the explosives or the one that doubles the healing. They have pretty much zero effect on this entire thing. You can in theory start with Saraband of Healing, but if you do that, you won't be able to know where the red gem is. The red gem always accumulates in the spot where the furthest experience gem is at that moment. This could either be at the far bottom left or the far bottom right. If you ever have to move because for some reason you're getting attacked and you pick up one experience gem, then this will lead to the game creating an entirely new one. If this is on the opposite side, it is very unlikely that you'll be able to pick up both of them. Step 5. Now we talk about positioning. As you can see on this picture here, my hand is aligning with the bottom of the clock. This is probably the best indicator that you have a safe position. Be aware that this is one of those direction points, so it's not set in stone that if you're here, everything will work out. In fact, in pretty much all the positions I managed to get to minute 30, and none of them were 100% consistent. There are two reasons why you need this position. Number one, you want to avoid to level up. This will be a frustrating journey for you. If you're lucky, it works on the first try. The reason why it is RNG heavy is because it relies on the rune tracer, it relies on where the center water lands, and it relies on the behavior of the enemies. Whether they walk behind the bookshelf or they go down below. Further, the enemies are not guaranteed to drop experience. 
So in some cases, 20 enemies might die on top of you and you don't level up, while in other cases, 6 enemies might die next to you, you level up and you have to reset. Number 2. You don't want to die if the rune tracer goes down below you and the enemies can reach you. If you draw a line from the bottom of the clock to the hand, you can pretty much stand anywhere on this line. The higher you are up, the more likely it is that you will get attacked, but the less experience you'll pick up. The further you're down, the more safe you should be, but it also becomes more likely that the rune tracer will leave this location where it's stuck in. So pretty much no matter what you do, there's no guaranteed way. You can play around and go a bit further to the left, a bit further to the right, but if someone tells you there is this one perfect position, this is simply not true. Step 6. As you can see to my left side there is the red gem. This red gem accumulates all the experience dropped in the future. In the game if there's too much experience on the ground, then instead of dropping more it accumulates it into one. If you don't see this red gem, then that means the moment you enter the stage, Santa water went off and it landed most likely off screen. If you don't see the gem, most people recommend that you just reset. Otherwise you'll have to take a gamble where it is. If you do want to take this gamble, just walk downwards and slightly nudge to the left side and the right side to see where it is. Step 7. The moment the 30 minute mark is hit and you see the enemies explode, get going. Pick up experience, pick up chests, Try to get Laurel and Clock Lancet and run towards your red gem. It is no problem if you pick up a majority of the chests while you do this. You only need two chests left over to evolve your weapons. If you don't see the Reaper appear, don't worry. He is most likely stuck in a room that is above what you can see here. Just move further down and he should teleport to you. After I am done explaining step by step, you will see a live attempt of me doing this. There I will give a lot more input on what is going through my mind. For the build, you have to go for Santa Water and Rune Tracer, these are the starting weapons, and Rune Tracer will deal by far the most damage. The Reaper has 1.3 million HP and you can expect that Rune Tracer does around 900,000 to 1 million damage of that HP. The next 4 weapons that you need are Laurel, Clock Lancet, Thousand Edge and Holy Wand. Since we will pick Slash, Thousand Edge got an enormous boost and pretty much tripled its damage. Holy Wand is just the next best option for single target damage. For the passive weapons, go for Duplicator, Spinach, Spellbinder, Empty Tome, Candle Labrador and Brazer. All of these are supposed to buff up the Rune Tracer. Be aware that you have to banish two weapons. The first one is Clock Lancet at 5 and Spellbinder at 4. This is done to get a perfect freeze timing. So in other words, when the Reaper unfreezes, he is frozen half a second to a second later. You can't get a perfect freeze timing since the Reaper jumps around and if he ever jumps over a beam, it's game over. The reason why we now ban Spellbinder is since you have the revival boost. It doesn't matter if you've died so far or not. At worst you will die twice until you get to the perfect timing of the clock lancet. Why is that not a big deal? Well you just got two free buffs from the awake arcana. You can take a gamble and not ban the Spellbinder at level 4, but you barely increase the damage that you deal while you guarantee that you'll lose if you died more than two times. The timing is so far off that the Clock Lancet will be past the Reaper when he unfreezes. Step 8 and this is the last step. Align your health bar with the half point of the table. Slightly nudge up. By this I mean nudge up. Do not move far up. If you move too far up the Reaper will constantly get frozen inside of the wall and the Rune Tracer will not be able to hit him. This is one of those cases where this is a directional help, so less of that is the best way to do it and more of if you don't know what you have to do, then this is the safest way that you'll get a 70-80% to 80 success rate. To quickly explain what the best option would be, on the top right next to the bookshelf, on the top left next to the bookshelf 
And on the bottom left of the table where the exit is, if you get the Reaper frozen there, you can position next to him and the Rune Tracer bounces will happen insanely fast. This is because it will hit the Red Death and then it bounces back right into an object. In theory, if you can manage to do this, you will kill the Reaper within 20 to 40 seconds. Just talking about a perfect case. However, if you try to do this without experience, there is a very high chance that you'll fail and despite me having more than 60 kills on this guy, you'll see how much I struggle later on since the second Reaper appeared and totally messed me over. And not only that, Sometimes when you try to push the reaper, it takes a tiny wrong move and he lands inside of a wall. So, just for the sake of your sanity, just do this with the table. If you want to experiment around, then sure, give it a go and try to push him into the perfect position. For the live demonstration, I decided against just showing the perfect run that makes it seem like you do this once and it's 100% sure. In this guide, I try to paint a picture that shows you Yes, this is what you're supposed to do, but it's not a big surprise if you fail for hours. Not because it has to be a fault, but simply because there's a lot of RNG involved. Now that you hopefully made it to the end, it's time for the serious business. And yes, start right away. The moment it hits 30 minutes, you are safe to go. As you can see, there are multiple red gems on the map and this will be quite a difficult task to do. My assumption would be this is the last one that was created, I actually didn't pay attention, but over the course of the time I will have to collect all of them. I have died twice, that means I have to compensate for that in Spellbinder levels. By that I mean I gained an additional 10% in duration and to make up for that I have to ban Spellbinder one level earlier. For the Arcana selection, since we went for Awake, we only look for one more, which is Slash, and the last one is just supposed to be something that has no effect on the game. You can either go for Zeraband or you can go for Heart of Fire, there is no big difference, but I highly advise against the other two. In fact, just don't do it. Duration will mess with the Freeze duration and Speed will mess with the Rune Tracers. It might sound good that they are faster, but it will just cause them to clip through the table and leave. So in my case I'll go for Saraband, because why not. There's the second Arcana and this will be Slash. There we go. Slash will buff up the Thousand Edge, that is the only use for it. There is no other Arcana right now that will have high benefit for you, so just go for this one. There we have Rune Tracer. Whenever you level up, try to not max out your item build, only when you have everything. Otherwise, the weapon will be taken out of the pool and it's more likely that you get three offers that you don't want to have. The death is coming from the right side, so I will make a turn and go to the left side. Duplicator is amazing, Spellbinder is also amazing, but Duplicator is more rare, so I'll go for that one here. Another chest. Santa water. Another chest. Chests do give you invulnerability for a short amount of time. Now this doesn't help us, he's too far away for that. But just that you know. So he got stuck on the table, that is actually very good for me. And there we go, duplicator. I know I said don't max out stuff, but don't waste a reroll for that. A reroll has more value than maxing out something. And there we have all the level ups. For this one, yeah, I do have to reroll. Let's just do this. You don't want to waste your banishes. With the reroll, we have the spellbinder. And keep in mind, I have to banish it once it's level 4. Magic wand, that's a nice pickup. Spinach, amazing. In this case, I will go for spinach again. The least priority is on Santa Water. Knife, that is amazing. Rune Tracer, do not pick up a Dragged Orb, it is a very bad weapon in this case. Brazer. Spellbinder. Knife. Knife again. Brazer. Candle Apador. Candle Apador. Santa Water. Now that we see armor, do not go for armor. The evolution of Rune Tracer is absolutely horrible. 
The reason is that it waits until the projectiles are all gone to shoot the next load and it overall deals around a third to a fourth of the damage that Rune Tracer does. It's not worth it. I'm gonna spend the next reroll. Santa Water. Magic Wand. Spellbinder. Brazer. Knife. Rune Tracer. Empty Tome. Perfect. This means I have all the passive weapons and now it's very likely that I will get the missing weapons that I need. Canned Labrador. Laurel. Perfect. Magic Wand. Laurel. Spellbinder level 4. That means the next time it shows up I will ban it. Spinach. Laurel. Laurel. One recommendation about the Spellbinder, even if you didn't die, I highly recommend that you ban it at level 4. If you ban it at level 4, the freezing is not perfect and you will eventually die, which will increase your stats and if you die twice, then the entire freeze is off and you're guaranteed to die insanely fast. But if you keep away 10% by banishing the Spellbinder, you're still safe. Razor. I'm gonna banish Spellbinder here. You want to banish it, make sure that you banish it. Otherwise, when you pick up chests to evolve your weapons, there's a high chance that it will get the last level. Santa Water. Gant Labrador. Laurel. Santa Water. Now I have to be careful, since my gems were split up, I might have to walk over there in a second. And I'm really concerned since I haven't gotten the Clock Lancet. Knife. Spinach. Clock Lancet. Perfect. Now for Clock Lancet there's also something special. You want to banish this at level 5. Now make sure when it shows level 5 that just means this level up will give it level 5. Do not banish it when there are only 4 of these squares filled out. Knife. Empty Tome. Now you don't really have to be careful. I will still avoid center water in case I don't get enough levels. And I will pretty much prioritize Clock Lancet. This is the one that I have to banish and if I don't max it out and pick up chests, it would be horrible to get a triple chest that puts it to level 6 for example. Clock Lancet. Clock Lancet. Brazer. Now that I'm looking for the Clock Lancet, I will max out as fast as I can. Spinach, Clock Lancet level 5. And the next time Clock Lancet shows up, I will banish it. Empty Tome, Laurel, Clock Lancet level 6. And there's the banish, as you can see we have 5 levels in it. Empty Tome, Empty Tome, Laurel. Now, as you can see, what I prioritized was Rune Tracer, Laurel, Clock Lancet, since it's banished, it's maxed out, Duplicator, Spellbinder, since it's banished, it's maxed out, Brazer, Candle Labrador, and Empty Tome. Candle Labrador and Brazer are just damage supports, but really necessary to do this entire thing. Spinach is the least important one out of these, damage wise, but it's still really nice. Knife, Knife. Magic Wand, Magic Wand, Magic Wand, Magic Wand, and Magic Wand. Center Water is the last one, and now we will just have the rest of the level ups. This is the first chest to open. There we have Holy Wand. And the second chest, this will be the Thousand Edge. Now, the death right now is over here. There are a couple of positions what you can do now and this is very complicated so listen carefully. The main position is above this table here that your health bar, the left side of the health bar aligns with the middle of the table and then you slightly bump up, just super slightly. What is this position about? This position is a newbie position, not meaning this as an insult 
but just if someone never did this and doesn't know what they exactly do, this is most likely the safest position to be in. If you want to experiment a bit or if you want to try out advanced strategies, the main goal that you want to achieve is that he is stuck somewhere where the Rune Tracer can bounce between the Red Death and a wall. So, for example, you can push him into this corner over here, next to the bookshelf, as well as to this side here, next to the bookshelf, but make sure that he goes slightly over and you stand in the corner. The reason is this opening is a lot bigger and you have to make sure that you start in this corner. The last position is the entrance over here. If you push him here to the entrance, just stand above and the Rune Tracer should bounce in this corner here or in this corner to the table and deal a ton of damage. Now for my case, I will just show all the scenarios that I can at least. So I will move over here. Right now he is frozen. There's a very good chance that he'll get stuck on the bookshelf to my left side. If that happens, I have to move over and manually move him in. So this right here, yeah, well, there we go. Never mind, I can't do it, otherwise I waste too much time. Now he is in the bookshelf, and this means he can walk through it. And as you can see, he gets frozen over here. I don't even have to change anything. In this case, I don't even need to bump up. And I will turn on the damage numbers, and you'll see, while the Rune Tracer bounces a lot, it's not perfect, right? It takes the entire section here to jump around. If we could minimize this to a tiny corner, we would deal a multiple amount of damage. So, what I'll try to do if he gets frozen over here, that sadly failed. But in this case, I slightly adjusted to the bottom left side of him. And as you can see, the main bouncing now happens in the middle of the table. Now that he's over here, I will switch sides and still the main bouncing happens here, due to my adjustment, since it goes to the table and switches back. This is pretty much an optimal position and I highly recommend you move as little as possible. There's a high chance that you will accidentally move him into the wall and suddenly you do nothing anymore. The second reaper has gotten me, that can happen. Now we just revive and wait until our main dev comes back. I just bumped up the other dev into the wall so he is not in the way once this one unfreezes. Now this is a very bad scenario since this one here is really in the way so what i'll do is i'll go below him and hope that he freezes here and gets hit by the rune tracer this is one of the worst cases that can happen to you so in this case i will go over here and this will make him come down to the bottom and hopefully get frozen to my left side there we go and as you can see the rune tracer is bouncing again the other death pushed him away and uh, this is not a problem i just moved over so the rune tracer can hit him again now, was this an easy guide? Well, no, obviously not. There was a lot of movement. So just for you, if you want to do this on your own and you feel like this was way too much, just go to this table here, slightly bump up with your cursor. This is the easiest way to do it and this is the safest position you can be in overall. I'm not saying this is the best position, but if you don't know what you're doing, then this is by far the safest one. As you can see, the timing of the freezes are still as good as possible, despite me getting another 5% in duration. And here's the end screen, as you can see, Rune Tracer did a ton of damage, 1000 edge as well, a high amount of damage, and Holy Wand, well, sadly you are now the worst weapon in this set. If you want to see more Vampire Survivors content, like guides to survive infinitely, bringing Tosi to level 200 and much more, feel free to check out the pinned comment, I will list some videos in there.